Hello everybody, today I am delivering lecture 3 of the module 2. In module 2, we are specially discussing the method of formulation of vibration problems. So, in the earlier class, I have discussed uh, two methods. One is based on the Newton's second law that is force balance or you can call it the D'Alembert's principle and the second one was the principle of, principle of conservative or uh, conservation of energy. So, with these two principles I have discussed the way of developing the equation of motions for the dynamic system and I have illustrated with an example of uh, single degree and multi degree freedom discrete system. Now, today I wish to discuss a very special technique for formulating the vibration problems and that is called the Hamilton's principle. This principle is widely used in continuous system because of its advantage that one can get the differential equation of motion as well as boundary condition simultaneously. This principle actually again utilizes the energy expressions and uh, the principle is based on the integration of the variation of the energy, total energy that is called the total potential over the time interval over a certain time interval and let us see how this principle is derived. So, in today's lecture I will discuss first the derivation of the Hamilton principle, then I will give the application of the Hamilton principle with some example in discrete system, then I will discuss with an example how the Hamilton principle can be used to obtain the governing differential equation of motion and boundary condition in case of continuous system. So, let us see what is the Hamilton principle. Sir William Hamilton was an Irish mathematician and physicist and he formulated a principle in dynamics in which the governing equation depends explicitly on the energy of the system. I have told earlier that Hamilton principle is applied when the energy of the system is clearly known. Now, this principle is an integral principle. The energy is integrated over time and this principle can be used to derive the governing differential equation of motion as well as boundary conditions in this system simultaneously. Of course, the question of boundary condition does not come in the discrete problems, discrete systems. However, the boundary conditions are important in case of this uh, continuous system where we encounter both initial and boundary value problems. Let us derive the Hamilton principle. If I use the virtual work method along with the D'Alembert's rule, then I can write summation of m i r i double dot minus f i delta r equal to 0, where delta r is the virtual displacement, delta r i is the virtual displacement of the mass particle i m i. The ith particle of the system has mass m i and we are summing over the n number of particles to get the total virtual work. So, according to principle of virtual work this is equal to 0. Now, note one thing that if I write the summation of f i dr, f i dot dr, this represents the virtual work done by the force f i acting on the particle i 
undergoing a displacement DRI. Now where DW represents again the sum of the virtual work done. Now assuming that this operator D by DT and delta operator are interchangeable, therefore we can now consider say differentiation of R dot r dot i i i for ith particle r dot dot this is the dot represents the time derivative whereas this dot is the dot product so delta r i this is the vector delta r is a displacement virtual displacement which is a vector this is also vector r is the uh, virtual displacement of the position vector of the particle this is also vector ok. Now when we consider the dot product of that and then we differentiate with respect to t then we can write r double dot into delta r i this is the vector plus r i dot this dot is the time derivative this double dot is the second derivative of r with respect to t and this is dot is also there that is the dot product and there also if I differentiate this, this, this is the product of two functions. So first let me uh, differentiate this, func this function r i. So we get r double dot i and then we get delta r i. So I differentiated this, this vector and therefore I get this uh, r double dot. Then here I again differentiated this, uh, this vector delta r i. So I got delta r i dot. Okay. So the product of two variables are differentiated. So we get two terms. Then we slightly rearrange this. So r i double dot into delta r i vector plus this term can be written in this fashion. So if I take the variation of this and inside this bracket I can write half r dot dot r dot. This r dot is the time derivative which represents uh, this dr by dt. Okay, and this dot is the dot product, dot product symbol. So you should not confuse this, uh, these two dots that I am telling. One represents the dot product, another is time derivative. Okay, so this uh, uh, product of two functions are broken up in this way, and then we consider now the term with the second derivative. So this term if I write now here from here I can write r i double dot r i then I can write this uh, term d by d t r i minus delta half One can understand that this is nothing but the half velocity square. So if I associate with this expression m, I can get the kinetic energy. Okay. Now this is manipulated like that. So we have got this term from the earlier expression. Now multiply by m both sides and sum over the entire system. So this is multiplied by m both sides we have multiplied by m and then we sum up over the entire system for n particles. So here I get in the left hand side I get m r double dot delta r i then right hand side I get this summation i i, I equal to 1 to n m i d by dt r dot i dot r i 
dot that is the scalar product minus that is i equal to 1 to n summation over n particles half m i then delta this is the variation of this quantity half r dot i scalar product r dot i ok. So, we can now easily understand that this is nothing but the variation of kinetic energy. So, we can write this this term as delta t where t is the kinetic energy. Kinetic energy of the entire system that is we sum up over the entire system with particles i is equal to 1 to n ok. So, we get this ultimately and now we can compare this term with our earlier result that we have written using the virtual work principle that. So, here f i delta r i equal to del w that is the work done. So, that is nothing but m i r i double dot. So, that we can bring here we can bring here this thing and then uh, we can write if this is we can write this as delta w then we have this delta t plus delta w is equal to summation i is equal to 1 to n m i d by d t r i dot delta r dot i. Okay. So, with this expression let us now proceed. Okay integrate both sides with respect to t between t1 and t2. So, I write an integral expression summation I have taken outside and then integration t1 to t2 here delta t delta w into dt t1 into t1 to t2 is the limit of the integration ok. Now, here summation i is equal to n integration t1 to t2 m i d by d t r dot i delta r i d t and here after integration. So, if I integrate it I will get this say I will simply get m i r dot i delta r t 2 t 1. So, in the limit after putting the limit I should get uh, this certain finite value. So, what is this finite value? So, that depends on what value delta r would take at t is equal to 1 and t is equal to 2. To determine this let us explain the Newtonian path and varied path ok. We take an example of simple beam say this is a simple beam simply supported beam I mean idealized as interconnected rigid masses mass particles whose displacement at any instant of time e are given by ui. Say for example, here uh, there are uh, we discretize this beam into 4 discrete masses. So, 1, 2, 3, 4. So, this is the displacement configuration of the beam at any instant of time say t1. So, for particle 1 or uh, rigid mass 1 this is the displacement u1 t1. So, this is the displacement say for the mass m3 and we can uh, write it u3 t1. So, that means if I want to label this we will write u3 at the time t instant t1. So, here again we can write u4 t1 ok. So, displacement configurations are denoted by this curve ok. Now, we take two time instants t1 and t2 in which the system moves from configuration 1 to 2. So, this is configuration 1 at other time instant say 
say here t1 is equal to some definite time instant and uh, here another time instant t2. t1 may be a initial uh, time also of starting the vibration or any other time in between. So, here you can see at uh, time instant t2 this is another configuration that the masses take. So, this is the displaced configuration at time t2 ok. During this time interval say t2 minus t1 that is t2 is equal to t1 plus say a time interval delta t, Newton's second law holds good. So, that means the force acting on the particle is proportional to the acceleration. So, that should be valid ok. Now, let us apply a virtual displacement delta ui to the ith particle at t is equal to t1 plus delta t. So, this is the shape that takes place at t is equal to t1 plus delta t that is t2 and then we apply a virtual displacement say delta u1 for this particle 1. So, automatically other particles will also have a displacement delta u2, delta u3, delta u4 like that ok. Now, if I want to plot the displacement configuration of the particle 1 that is u1 with respect to time, we can get a plot like that. So, this is actually a varied path that is the dashed line that we have shown here. So, here you can see the Newtonian path is here indicated by solid line and this is the varied path that is the dotted line. So, we show the displacement of one lump mass particle say m, m i or m 1 here as a function of time. So, this is the displacement of the mass 1 m 1 at time t 1 and this is the displacement of the mass 1 again at time t 2. And you can see this the varied path the virtual displacement that is imposed on this system or, or the mass 1 is delta u 1. So, this displacement is u 1 t 1 plus delta t and the very uh, this virtual displacement that is increment of displacement is u1 plus delta u1 ok. So, one is Newtonian path and another is varied path ok. Now, in this figure we can see that varied path coincides with Newtonian path at time t is equal to t1 at time t is equal to t2. This is because we have selected delta u1 to be 0 at t1 and t2. So, we have selected in such a way in such a fashion that the displacement of the variation of Newtonian path and varied path is 0 at t1 and t2 two time instance. Or in the other hand a slightly different path that is known as varied path is obtained at any given instant of time as if one allows a small variation delta u i with no associated change in time. That means, delta t here is a small interval that we have taken is approximately 0. In view of the fact, we can now set this earlier uh, set the delta r at time t is equal to t 2 and t is equal to t 1 to be 0 because Newtonian path and varied path coincides at time t is equal to t 1 and time t is equal to t 2 which are the lower limit and upper limit of the integration. So, based on that we can now write that the integration of variation of kinetic energy plus variation of the work done by the forces over the time limit t1 to tt t2 is equal to 0 because delta r is 0 at t is equal to t1 and t is equal to t2. This is what is proved by Hamilton and known as Hamilton principle. So, Hamilton principle can be stated as 
integration of t1 t2 within bracket delta t plus delta w dt equal to 0 integration is with respect to time now you can see here the t is the kinetic energy of the system which takes account of the derivative of the uh, displacement first derivative of the displacement and w is the work done by the forces now if the force system is conservative then delta w equal to minus delta v and in that case we can write this principle as t1 uh, integration with a limit t1 to t2 within bracket delta t minus delta v dt equal to 0. So, this t minus v is a term which is known as Lagrangian. So, this L is equal to t minus v is called Lagrangian. In the textbook of dynamics you will find it. So, when I integrate the Lagrangian between two time limit variation of Lagrangian and it is 0 according to Hamilton principle. So, this is what is Hamilton principle. Okay. So, we have proved this Hamilton principle and now let us see how this uh, Hamilton principle can be applied if the force system is in general consists of conservative as well as non-conservative forces. So, in that case uh, variation of work done delta w can be written as minus delta v plus delta w n c where w n c is the work done by the non-conservative forces. Non-conservative forces are the externally applied load and also your damping force in the dynamic system. So, in that case Hamilton principle can be modified as delta, delta is the variation within bracket t minus v plus w n c into d t that is integration with respect to time and within the limit t 1 to t 2 and again it is 0. So, in the including the non-conservative forces now we can write this uh, for conservative forces only this is equal to 0, but when non-conservative forces are there then we should write L plus W n c d t. Non-conservative forces arises due to this, um, uh, this damping force then thermal stresses as well as other applied forces on the system. Okay. Let us give some example. First, take a simple example of single degree freedom system that is without damping, that is, system is in a conservative system and no externally applied forces are there. So, the kinetic energy of the system is T is equal to half m x dot square, and potential energy of the system is V equal to half k x square. So, Lagrangian we can write T minus V equal to half m x dot square minus half k x square. Now, applying the Hamilton principle, we can now write this as dl dt t1 limit uh, of integration t1 t2 and then integration is carried out and here you can see that when we differentiate this term take the variation 2 x dot will come. So, 2 will get cancelled with this uh, half will get cancelled with the 2 that is coming from this differentiation of this quantity and again uh, variation of this. So, this is the uh, variation of kinetic energy that I have written and this is the variation of potential energy again here the 2 x will come after taking the variation and then half will be cancelled. So, k x into delta x and minus sign is there. So, this has to be now integrated within the limit t 1 to t 2. Okay. 
So, first let us integrate this term that is coming from the kinetic energy. So, m x dot delta x dot d t integration with respect to t and the limit t 1 to t 2. Okay. Now, you can see this is uh, two variable x dot and delta x dot. So, we should do the integration using the, the rule of integration by parts. Okay. So, first let us write this assuming that the differential operator d by dt and the variational operator delta are interchangeable. So, we write here and m is a constant. So, we take m as outside and we write x dot d by dt into delta x. So, this is because x dot we can write here x dot we can write dx by dt and if this is there. So, we interchange. So, we write this term first and then we write delta x. So, this is written all right. Now, carrying out integration by parts, let us see what we get. If I take this uh, uh, this as the first function, this is the first function and this is the second function. So, the integration by parts gives first function into integration of the second function. Second function is this. So, integration of second function will give delta x and then we have to apply the limits. So, t1 and t2 are the lower and upper limits that are written here minus derivative of the first function. So, x double dot then integration of the second function delta x and then integration t1 to t2 is the limit. So, that we got ok. So, kinetic energy uh, variation and integration in the time limit t1 to t2 we have finished. Now, let us see for potential energy delta v. So, delta v integration is uh, very easily carried out because this k x d x. So, we get this integration when we carry out delta v d t. So, we get k x d x d t and time limit t 1 to t 2 ok. So, therefore, delta L d t this is the Lagrangian we can easily write from the earlier expression m x dot delta x limit t 1 to t 2 minus we can combine this this and this ok. Because this is coming from the k x square that is potential term. So, we can combine this and this ok. So, we can write uh, this is coming after putting the limit when we integrated this variation of kinetic energy and uh, after combining the variation of potential energy with the integral sign we now get m x double dot plus k x delta x d t that has to be integrated with respect to t. Uh, in the limit t 1 to t 2 and according to Hamilton principle this variation of delta L uh, when the integrated in the time limit t 1 to t 2 is 0. So, we get this expression. Now, you can see that our assumption was that varied path and original displaced shape coincide at t is equal to t 1 and t is equal to t 2 and delta x is arbitrary not 0. So, that means this quantity must be 0 at t 1 t is equal to t 2 and t is equal to t 1 and since delta x is arbitrary cannot be 0. So, the possibility is that m x double dot k x equal to 0. So, this gives the governing differential equation of motion governing differential equation of motion. So, Hamilton principle was applied for a very simple oscillator to make you understand the concept of an application of Hamilton principle. Now, let us move to a system with uh, adding a damper. So, this obviously a non-conservative system 
and therefore the Hamilton principle is modified in this fashion. So, delta the variation L plus work done due to non conservative forces. So, that has to be integrated with respect to time t in the limit t1 to t2. Now, here non conservative force field is a damping force and external force. Hence, the virtual work done by the non conservative force is now written as delta WNC that is the virtual work done by the non conservative forces. Let us see what is the work. See if the displacement is x and this is the positive direction of the displacement we assume that positive direction of the velocity also in the same direction. So, velocity is x dot. So, therefore, the damping force is producing a negative work. The work that is produced due to uh, this uh, displacement field which is in the opposite direction to the damping force. So, therefore, the virtual work done by the damping force is written as minus c x dot delta x plus the virtual work done by the force f is written as f t delta s. Of course, in the dynamic system the force f is function of time t. So, now we can write this Hamilton principle delta l dt equal to m x dot delta x t 1 t 2 that we have obtained earlier from the integration of the variation of the kinetic energy and I am not repeating here you will get this same term is available here available here. So, whatever I have got here due to integration of the variation of kinetic energy I just uh, written here and therefore, the other additional term that is coming C x dot and minus f t. So, this is again inside the integral sign and since delta x is 0 at t is equal to t 1 and t 2 because of the coincidence of the, the Newtonian path and varied path at t is equal to t 1 and t 2, we now get the term inside the integral sign to be 0 since delta x is not 0. So, therefore, governing differential equation is obtained as m x double dot plus c x dot plus k x equal to f t. This is very popular equation we know it for a simple uh, this damped oscillator under the action of external disturbance f t. Okay. Now, let us move to a uh, multi degree freedom system. First, let us consider a 2 degree freedom system. If you understand the concept of 2 degree freedom system, you can easily extend it to n number of degrees of freedom. Okay. Now, here the kinetic energy of the two masses are written as you can see kinetic energy written as for the first mass m1 half m1 x1 dot square that is the velocity square. For the second mass it is written half m2 x2 dot square. So, this is the total kinetic energy of the system. Okay. Total potential energy of the system what we get here say this is one spin k 1 and this is another spin. First let us uh, give our attention to the first spin whose stiffness is k 1. Okay. You can see here that one end of the spin is uh, fixed to a wall and the other end is moving. So, relative displacement between the two ends is x 1 minus 0 that is x 1. So, we write the potential energy for the stored in the spring k 1 is half k 1 x 1 square. Now, come here to the second spring whose stiffness is k 2. Now, you can see here uh, that uh, the relative displacement between the two ends of the spring is x 1 minus x 2. So, we write the potential energy as half k 2 x 1 minus x 2 x 2 whole square. So, you should clearly note that the spring forces that is determined by the relative displacement should be considered in the expression of this potential energy stored in the spring. So, we can now 
proceed towards uh, the Hamilton principle. One is the expression for kinetic energy and potential energy unknown. So, delta T that is the variation of kinetic energy can be written again m1 x1 dot delta x1 dot plus m2 x2 dot delta x2 dot. Okay. So, let us integrate this kinetic energy in the limit T1 to T2. So, here for first term we carry out the integration that we have already carried out earlier and I have written here m1 bracket x1 dot delta x1 and the integration t1 t2 because it is coming from the uh, rule of integration by parts taking this as the first function and this is the second function and another trick is that the differential operator d by d dt and the variational operator delta are interchangeable. So, with these two tricks we now write this the integration by parts of this term and we get x1 dot delta x1 the limit is t1 to t2 minus the differentiation of the first function that is x1 dot we get x1 double dot and integration of the second function delta x1 and then again integration within the limit t1 to t2 and with respect to time t. Similarly, we get here for m2 into x2 dot delta x2 t1 t2 minus integration t1 t2 x2 double dot delta x2 dt. Now, again we apply the same logic that delta x1 and delta x2 that is the variation of the displacement x1 and x2 for the mass lump mass m1 and m2 at time instant t1 and t2 are 0 because the Newtonian path and varied path coincides at t is equal to t1 and t2. So, therefore, delta x1 vanishes and delta x2 vanishes. So, we are left with only minus m1 integration t1 t2 x1 double dot delta x1 delta t dt and minus m2 integration t1 t2 x2 double dot delta x2 dt ok. So, let us see the potential energy variation. So, potential energy variation is taken and then integrated. There are two springs uh, we earlier obtained the potential energy expression like this. So, v is equal to half k1 x1 square plus half k2 x1 minus x2 whole square. So, after this uh, taking the variation and then uh, integrating within the time limit t1 to t2, we get k1 x1 delta x1 dt plus k2 x1 minus x2 into delta x1 minus delta x2 dt. So, combining this because now Hamilton principle is to be written after combining this delta t and delta v, we now get the integration t1 to t2 delta t minus v dt what is t minus b? t minus b is now Lagrangian. So, it is written from the earlier expression that we already obtained here delta t, it is brought forward here, then we write minus delta v here. So, limit of the integration is t1 t2 and we integrated the expression delta t minus v dt and m1 uh, this will be vanished. So, we ultimately will be left out with this m1 x1 double dot delta x1 dt. Of course, this expression has to be integrated with respect to time t1 and t2. Again, another term will be associated with this minus m2 integration t1 t2 x2 double dot delta x2 dt. For potential energy variation and integration, you can easily identify these terms. So, we can write here say k1 plus k2 x1 minus k2 x2 delta x1 dt. How we can write here? Collecting the coefficient of delta x1 because there are two independent displacement because there are two degrees of freedom x1 and x2 are the 
two independent variables. So, we collect the coefficient of delta x1 and delta x2 so that we get two independent equations because you know the for two degrees of freedom system there will be two coupled equation of motion. So, therefore, collecting the terms with the coefficient delta x1 we now write k1 plus k2 x1 minus k2 x2 and collecting the term with the coefficient delta x2 we now write minus k2 x1 plus k2 x2. After rearranging this is now written as minus because this term will be vanished this is written here is 0 because delta x1 and delta x2 are 0 at t is equal to t1 and t2 ok. So, we write now here the integration m1 x1 double dot plus k1 plus k2 x1 minus k2 x2 delta x1 delta xt after collecting all the terms with the coefficient delta x1 from the variation of kinetic energy and variation of potential energy after integration. So, similarly the collecting the terms of the coefficient of delta x2 from the integration of variation of kinetic energy and potential energy we can now write integration t1 t2 bracket m2 x2 double dot minus k2 x1 plus k2 x2 delta x2 dt. So, this is x2 x2 dt ok. So, now since delta x1 and delta x2 are non-zero quantities and according to Hamilton principle that that equation t minus v equal to 0. So, only possibility is that this is 0 and also this is 0. So, this is equal to 0 and this is equal to 0. In this way we get two equations of motion for the two degrees of freedom system m1 x1 double dot plus k1 plus k2 x1 minus k2 x2 equal to 0 and here m2 x2 double dot minus k2 x1 plus k2 x2 equal to 0. If I now want to write this equation in the matrix form, we can write here say first the mass matrix that you can see it is a diagonal matrix. So, this is mass matrix then let us write the stiffness matrix. So, stiffness matrix k1 plus k2 minus k2 minus k2 and this k2 equal to 0 because it is a conservative system and we have not considered any damping and also no external force. Now, you can see here uh, you can observe the mass matrix is a diagonal matrix and stiffness matrix is symmetric and positive definite matrix that means diagonal elements are positive because k1 k2 cannot be a negative quantity and you can see that stiffness matrix is also symmetrical that is because of the Maxwell reciprocal law ok. Now, let us come to an example of continuous system. Continuous system as I have told you earlier have distributed properties that is whatever proper dynamic uh, proper or the physical properties that is mass stiffness or even damping are distributed in space. So, in fact this mass is distributed uniformly or non uniformly because if the beam is having or bar is having a variable cross section. Here of course, we have taken a uniform cross section you can see in a figure. So, the area of cross section is constant therefore, if the density of the material is constant then mass per unit length is also constant ok. So, here rho is the density of the material rho is the density. So, the mass per unit length here is rho into A that is mass per unit length. 
A is the cross sectional area which is treated constant here. Okay. Now this bar is subjected to axial vibration and U is the displacement in the longitudinal direction that is the in the axial direction. So here the work done is nothing but the strain energy stored in the system. So strain energy stored in the elastic system is now U is equal to half A e is the, uh, the axial rigidity of the bar. A is the cross section, e is the modulus of elasticity of the material into del u by del x whole square dx and half is there because this is the expression for strain energy of the bar. Kinetic energy of the bar again we write this is the mass per unit length and the velocity del u by del t whole square and this is integrated in the domain of the bar that is 0 to L. So therefore the kinetic energy has to be found out after integration because this is a continuous system. Similarly potential energy is also found out after integration within the limit from 0 to L for the entire bar. Let us now find the variation of these quantities and then we use the Hamilton principle. First let us find this the variation of potential energy and its integration with respect to time limit T1 and T2. We can see here the double integration comes because the potential energy again is an integral expression. So uh, after taking the variation we can now write AE del U by del X because the variational operator and the differential operator are interchangeable. So I write del by del X into del u dx dt. So this is the integration of the variation of the potential energy. You can note here the double integration has to be carried out because potential energy is again a integral expression. So the space integral as well as time integral is carried out ae del u by del x del by del x into delta u that is the variation of the displacement dx dt. Okay. Now let us come to the kinetic energy uh, variation. So delta t is the variation of kinetic energy and its integration with respect to time t in the limit t1 to t2 is now carried out here. You can see uh, because again uh, the kinetic energy is a integral expression uh, since it is found after integrating in the along the length of the bar. So it is written as a double integral 0 to L and time integration limit T1 to T2 rho A is the mass per unit length and del U by del T is the velocity is square dx dt. So again the taking the variation and again we use the same tricks that uh, the variational operator and differential operator are interchangeable. So we can write here del by del t and del u. Okay. Because when we take the variation it will come say 2 del u by del t and uh, this half term is there for kinetic energy. So this half will be cancelled with this 2 and therefore we are left with rho a del u by del t and after interchanging the variational operator and the differential operator we can write del by del t. So integration by parts of this expression now becomes rho a del u by del t. If this is taken as the first function this is of course a constant we can take outside the integral also. So if this is taken as a first function we write first function and then the integral of the second function. So integral of the second function that means uh, here say del del t and if I do the integration then it becomes del u. So it becomes del u and the limit of integration is put t1 and t2. Okay. Then uh, the other term second term this is the constant term rho a then differentiation of the first function first function was del u by del t 
so it becomes a second derivative of u del square u by del t square then integration of the second function so it becomes del u and then dt term is there because we have to integrate with respect to time and the limit of integration again I am telling t1 and t2. So combining this uh, del u dt here we have used u uh, symbol u to denote the potential energy. So combining this t minus b that is the Lagrangian and uh, the integration of the variation of the Lagrangian we now write here the Hamilton principle like that and of course because of that property that varied path and the Newtonian path coincides at time t is equal to t1 and t2 we now get delta u is 0 at time t is equal to t1 and t2 so ultimately this expression vanishes hence applying the Hamilton principle we now write delta t minus u dt equal to integration 0 to t rho a del u by del t dt minus rho a del square u by del t square del u dt dx minus this is coming from the potential energy term. So minus a 0 to l integration del u by del x del u t1 t2 uh, here actually this limit of integration because it is a space integral so 0 to l. Now this integral has special meaning this term has special meaning which results into a n conditions and then this is the other parts that we have carried out the integration of the variation of potential energy. So that is carried out and then we have written here together okay so identifying this term inside the integral so i can write minus rho a del square u by dt square plus a e del square u by del x square within bracket then multiplied by dt del u dx and it is a double integration you can see the integration is done with respect to x as well as with respect to time and limit of integration for space variable is 0 to L and for time variable is T1 to T2 and other term that is coming from the integration by parts where the limit is already applied. So here you get one term uh, 0 to L rho A del U by del T del U in the limit T1 T2 and here you will get a e 0 to l del u by del x del u t1 t2 del x equal to 0. Now here you can see del u is 0 again uh, because of this condition then Newton um, path and varied path coincides at time t is equal to t1 and t2. So this term vanishes, this term completely vanishes. So now we get the differential equation is this for the bar that is rho a I can write is equal to a e this is the differential equation and from other term this is 0 and this is also 0 so this term has to be 0 so that means we get del u by del x is 0 or this del u is 0 that means u is constant or u is 0. So that gives the boundary condition or s conditions in the bar and this one gives the differential equation of motion. So by applying the Hamilton principle simultaneously we obtain the governing differential equation as minus rho a del square u by del t square this is the inertia force you can easily identify plus a e del square u by del x square equal to 0 that is the governing differential equation and boundary condition for the system can be easily identified as at x is equal to 0 and l a e del u by del x equal to 0 or u is equal to 0. So this condition you can see del u by del x is the strain. So strain into your this 
modulus of elasticity will give you the stress. So, here you can see that uh, if the bar is free at either of the end or at both the ends, then you get that the stress is 0 or if the bar is fixed or clamped at any edges x is equal to L or x is equal to L, we get this displacement is 0. So, we get two important boundary conditions, one represents free condition for that A e del u by del x, this may happen in one end or this may happen in both the ends and the fixed condition that is u is equal to 0, this may happen in one end or both the ends. So, this is the illustration of the Hamilton principle in order to derive the differential equation of motion for a bar undergoing the axial vibration. Of course, we have taken the undamped situation. Okay. So, let us see the summary of today's lecture. In this lecture, we have discussed the Hamilton principle. I derived the Hamilton principle from the basic theorems of virtual work and then we discuss the concept of Newtonian path and varied path in virtual displacement field. The main advantage of using Hamilton principle in continuous system is that one can obtain governing differential equation of motion as well as boundary conditions simultaneously. So, that should be obtained simultaneously. It is the speciality of continuous system. You will get you get this uh, differential equation and motion, differential equation of motion and boundary condition simultaneously, specially for the continuous system. So, Hamilton principle is very much useful for deriving this uh, equation of motion and or formulating the problem of the dynamic system in a continuous or distributed parameter system. The consideration of non-conservative force field in the formulation of problem using Hamilton principle was discussed. So, that the modification of this original Hamilton's equation was that including the work done due to non-conservative forces is written like that. Then we uh, solve the examples of single degree freedom system multi degree freedom system and discrete system. Of course, these are the discrete system that I have taken and then one problem of continuous system having the axial mode of vibration in a bar of uniform cross section and uniform mass has been illustrated neglecting damping. So, this was the today's topic, topics actually we concentrated on the derivation of the Hamilton principle and its application to derive the differential equation of motion in case of discrete system and the differential equation as well as boundary condition in case of continuous system. Thank you very much.